Hi, I'm Mike Santos with Nova Polymers. We're going to walk through the process of setting up and installing the Kobo TC851 hot stamp unit. We've taken the unit out of the packaging and the crate and we've placed it up here on this table. One important thing to note is that the unit weighs about 500 pounds, so you want to make sure you have it on a really nice solid table. Once you take it out, you're going to note a couple of things. We've got a toolbox that has all of the parts and tools that are needed to assemble the hot stamp unit. There's also the instruction manual inside the toolbox. In the white box here, we have a rubber silicone pad that is used to mount onto the heated platen for the hot stamping process. We also have the handle here with a little blue top. That gets mounted in the machine and is used to raise and lower the head during the hot stamping process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to locate the plug. You're going to notice that it has a European receptacle on it. You're going to need to take that off and find another receptacle that matches your outlet. Now the machine is 220 single phase. Once we do that, we can unpackage everything and we'll make all of our adjustments, mount the pad, and we'll be ready to hot stamp. Okay, now we've got the plug changed. And now we're going to cut it open and unpackage it. Now that the machine is unpackaged, we're going to start by mounting the handle. We're going to go in our toolbox and find the Allen key that fits right up in here. I'm going to slide the handle into the hole here. Once it's in place, we can tighten it up. Okay. Okay. Now that we have the handle in place, We've slid the machine around to the back side where we have three bolts. These three bolts mount and lock the entire head in place. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back into our toolbox, grab the Allen wrench, and we're going to loosen these three bolts. We're going to loosen them up, and then we're going to raise the entire head of the machine. Okay. Now that the bolts are loose, we're going to come up here to our adjustment wheel and we're going to lift the entire head up. Okay, we're going to turn this. As you can see, it's raising. We're going to come up a good amount here to get started. Okay. For now, we're going to leave the bolts loose and we're going to turn the machine back around and we're going to make some adjustments on the front side. Before we're done, we're going to come to the back side and tighten them up once we have everything set and in place. Our next step is to loosen up the tray lock, which you're going to find underneath the tray. Once it's loose, we can pull the tray out. It may be a little tight to move at first, but as the machine heats up, it'll move a lot smoother. Okay, we're going to come over here to our white box and take out our rubber silicone pad. With the pad, we're going to have a couple pieces of heat tape. I'm going to lay it down, face down, and the tape we'll get it here to the back of the pad. Then when the machine comes up to temperature, we're going to slide it underneath, bring it down, and it will adhere to the platen. Before we mount the pad, we have to turn the machine on and let it get up to temperature. So we're going to come over here to the power box, flip the switch to on, and set our temperature. We're going to run it up to approximately 180 degrees, right about there and we're going to wait for the machine to come up to temperature before we put it on there. It's a heat transfer tape, so it's really important that the machine is nice and warm before you try to mount it and make that contact between the ply and, and the pad. Now that we're up to temperature, we're ready to set the mounting height. So we're going to take the tape off, and we're going to push the drawer in a little bit so the pad is underneath the head. What we want to do is we want to bring the handle down. Okay, we can see right here it's touching the pad and it's not yet in the set position. So what we need to do is come back up top here and raise the head up a little bit. So when we bring the handle down, it sets in that lock position. Okay, let's come up a little bit here. Just a little tight. Okay, now there we are. So what we want is to come down in this lock position to be nice and snug on that pad. So we're going to raise it up a little bit, bring the drawer back out, and now we're going to put the tape on it. The tape is typically a little bit bigger than the pad, so we want to get it right in here and get our scissors and just cut this little edge off. Okay. 
Let's cut this here. Okay, I'll do the other one. Okay, now that we've got it cut to size, we're going to take it and peel this white release liner off the back. And I've got a little trick. You take the corner here and rip it just a little bit, okay? Then we can actually get to the liner here. This tape is very, very sticky. Okay. Get this down. Grab the back piece, same thing. Rip the corner here. Lay this down, try to position it nice and evenly here on the pad. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to push the table in and we're going to try to align the front edge of the pad with the front edge of the platen. Be careful of your hands because the platen is about 180 degrees, so you definitely don't want to touch it with a knuckle while you're going in. Okay, we're going to slide it in. And you're going to look up from the top here, just kind of eyeball it here. What I'd like to do is bring it down just a little bit here and see what we can get. Once we think we have it in the right position, we're ready to pull the handle down. Now, once we pull that handle down, we're going to hold it down for about 10 seconds before we raise it back up. So make sure you have it in the proper place because once you bring this handle down, it's going to stick to it and be very difficult to get back off. Okay, we think we're good, and let's do it. A couple seconds here. What we're really doing is just letting that heat melt the tape and make that bond between the two of them. We could probably lift it up about now. We can see the pad stuck on there. So I'll bring it down again. Let it sit on there for a few more seconds. Now you can raise and lower it a couple of times just to make sure the pad's stuck on there really well but don't leave it down too long because you'll transfer the heat to the platen. Okay, I think we're good. Now that the pad is mounted, we're going to go to the back of the machine again and tighten up those three bolts. Okay, we can slide it out here. Now I'm not going to tighten them too tight because I'm going to loosen them up one more time. Just snug them up a little bit here. The reason I'm doing this is as I tighten this, it's pulling the head back up tighter. And we're going to slide it back and we're going to look at it and make sure that the plate is level to the table. Okay, I'm going to slide it back here. And we can actually get down here and pull this down and look at our corners. Make sure we're nice and level. Which we actually look pretty good on this side. We'll come back here on this side. We can see that it's coming down nice and flat on there. If you look at the front of the machine here, we have four bolts. These bolts adjust the head. If for whatever reason it's out of alignment, you can loosen these up and make adjustments. So now we have our silicone pad mounted and we know that our platen and everything is set. The next step is to go back and loosen the three bolts like I talked about and raise the head up a little bit to compensate for the thickness of the photopolymer. Remember what we're looking for when we slide our piece of photopolymer underneath is to bring the handle down and for the head to come down into the lock position here. I'll lift it back up. Once you do that, you can reach back behind here, tighten the bolts again. It'll shift the head up and it will move a little bit and that's why we have this fine tune adjustment right here. What we have here is the top one is a lock. You can actually loosen this up and we can see by coming down we're nice and snug. If I turn it this way, I'm going to come down and I can't come down because it's lowered it too much. Okay, I'm going to go back the other direction right until I get right back in that lock position again. The only time you're going to need to go in the back and loosen up those bolts to move the head up and down with the wheel on top is if you're going from, let's say, our PTO 60, which is a sixteenth of an inch, up to the eighth inch material or maybe the eighth inch material up to the quarter inch. So you're going to make those coarse adjustments by loosening the back, raising and lowering the head, and then the fine tune adjustments right here in front. 
The last thing I'd like to talk about is the feed controllers on the sides of the machine. We typically don't use this for hot stamping photopolymer, but just so you know how they work, we have a feed controller over here on the side. And if we actually move this up off of zero, we can actually set the length that it will feed when we pull the handle down. So when I pull the handle down and raise it back up, you'll see the rollers move. And what you would do is you'd put the roll of foil on the left side, feed it underneath the head, and it would wrap up on the intake side. Thank you.